Good morning, everyone. You're watching Galesville United Methodist Church online service for March the 21st. Uh, next week, March 28th, we will have our first uh, service, our first Sunday service in the sanctuary since the pandemic shut us down. I hope to see you there as well. And uh, uh, if this is your first time visiting us online, you will still be able to visit online next week, or you can come to the service in Galesville. Uh, before we start this morning's service, Pastor Joanna has some announcements to make as usual. Pastor? As far as announcements for the, today, um, Dave will have more about the Good Friday Prayer Vigil, which is of course on Good Friday from 8 a.m. Friday to 8 a.m. Saturday. Um, In-person worship begins Sunday, March 28th, which is Palm Sunday, and we hope to have in-person worship every week from then on. We will all sign in and wear masks and remain socially distant. And also, um, at the last church council meeting, we had installation of our church officers, and uh, a gift was given to the the church officers. So if you weren't there, I've stuck things in, in your mailbox here outside of the uh, church secretary's office. So you can, can pick up that. Good morning. I want to say a little bit about the Good Friday Prayer Vigil. It was brought to my attention this week that last year we did a totally virtual Good Friday Prayer Vigil. So I thought, if you'd like to participate, but you're not able to show up in person at the church, then do a virtual Good Friday um, vigil at your home. You don't have to come to church. You can do it in your house or wherever you happen to be on that day. So let me give you my phone number, 443-370-6239. I'm also in the church directory. I've only got five hours filled in. I'm not panicking yet, but I would feel a whole lot better if I had a lot more than five hours filled in on the 24-hour prayer vigil. So come on, people. Call me before I have to call you. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Dave Loftus here with more birthdays and anniversaries. We have one anniversary this week. Robert and Judy Ringler. So let's sing happy anniversary to Robert and Judy. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Robert and Judy. Happy anniversary to you. And we have four birthdays this week. Charlie Harris, Teresa Jett, Sharon Solberg, and Emily Welch. So let's sing happy birthday to all of them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jesus loves you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, everyone. This is Dave Loftus, and I'll see you again next week with more birthdays and anniversaries. Would you please join me now in our call to worship? One step on the path, we are returning home. Drawing closer to God, we are coming back home. Seeing the errors we've made, we are turning toward home. Knowing more about ourselves, we are making our way home. Trusting in God's embrace, we are coming home.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Suffering God, you told us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. We're still not sure we want to go that far. We had hoped that becoming followers in this day and age would be a more rational business. We had hoped to fit our religion in the spare corners of our lives. It wasn't supposed to be an inconvenience, yet you continue. To call us and we squirm uncomfortably teach us to respond gratefully to your invitation teach us to sacrifice not only for others but for you and take what we can give right now transforming it into an offering of our deepest selves in your son's name we pray amen hi guys uh, we are almost done with the month of March and Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday are right around the corner and coming up and for the month of March our chapter 3 March's third month it is the theme of focus on faith and we had just gotten started with this theme last year and church was canceled for a good bit it says to what can you do to deeper your faith during the season of Lent. And we talked about last year about Lent and how some people give up something. Some may give up something they love, such as a special treat or some habit that they love as a sign of sacrifice in order to represent what Jesus sacrificed for us. Um, it's often something that really tests our self-discipline, something that's not always easy to give up because Jesus's time in the desert wasn't easy and what he gave up wasn't easy. So we try to represent that. But then other people use it as a time to give up a bad habit in order to form a good habit, something that deepens their faith, maybe a way of positively turning their life back toward God and what he wants for us. So the season of Lent definitely reminds us about Jesus and about him giving up his life for us. But in the Bible, there are many stories about sacrifice and giving things up that we love. One of the biggest, for example, is Jochebed. And I know you guys, we've talked about her before, but she was the mother of Moses. And she gave birth to him at a time when Pharaoh had ordered that all Hebrew baby boys under the age of three be killed. But Jochebed saw something in her baby that was special that led her to know that he wasn't an ordinary baby or an ordinary child. And so by faith in God, she and her husband hid Moses for three months, despite the orders that Pharaoh had given. But the day finally came when she knew that she couldn't hide him anymore. It was getting too dangerous and she had to do something even more difficult than breaking the law and hiding her baby she had to let her baby go and trust God with the rest. So Jochebed, as we know, she put Moses in a basket and she sent him down the Nile River. She had to believe that God was going to take care of one of the things that she loved the most in the entire world. 
And as we know, Moses ended up being raised in the most powerful household in all of Egypt. He was raised in Pharaoh's household. And it paved the way for him to be the one that God used to lead the Hebrews out of slavery and captivity. Very important job. And the faithfulness of Jochebed is what set in motion a plan that changed the pages of history. And we've all had to accept answers to prayers that didn't turn out the way we wanted. But Jochebed's story is a huge reminder that God is always working out better things for us than anything that we can even imagine. There will be times when it feels like God is asking us to give up something we love and we don't wanna do it, we resist, but we can trust that he will use it for good and eventually he will give us something better in return. We just have to trust in him. At this time, we will share our joys and lift up those that need to be remembered in prayer. We want to continue to keep Robin Brucker and Allison McKim in our prayers. Um, all the folks that are on our prayer list in the bulletin. Um, I saw Ray Glenn in physical therapy today. Um, he's, he's working hard to get his knee working. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Jonathan for Patty Zhang, for Ross Moreland, for Cindy Hardesty, and for Julie Crandall. So let's go to God in prayer. Why is it, Lord, that we rush headlong into the holidays? The store shelves have been filled with bunnies and eggs and candy and all the trimmings of the secular Easter, and we are drawn to planning for that day. We feel a sense of urgency, and yet you have called us to be on this journey, gradually coming with Christ to the cross and beyond. Slow us down. Help us to look more closely at our own lives, at the many ways in which they are driven and demands are placed upon them. Remind us again of the ministry and mission of Christ, who came that we all may have life. Lord, please be with those that are listed in our bulletin that need your prayers, especially Allison McKim and Robin Barucker, Cindy Hardesty and Julie Crandall, Jonathan Sanchez and Patty Zhang. Ross Moreland and Ray Glenn. Help them to feel your healing presence with them. Silently, we have offered prayers for family and friends, for situations near and far. We have asked for your help and healing and blessing. Make us ready to receive these precious gifts. Walk with us on this pathway. Help us to look at the barriers that have prevented us from following Christ and guide us through them that they may become stronger in our faith and our service to you. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, please join me in this morning's Psalter. It's Psalm 51 verses 1 through 12. Uh, I'm reading from the Com English Bible. Have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you, you alone. I've committed evil in your sight. That's why you are justified when you render your verdict, completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt, in sin, 
from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret space. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all of my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put me new, faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Our gospel lesson this morning is from John chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Some Greeks were among those who had come up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus replied, the time has come for the human one to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will also be. My Father will honor whoever serves me. Now I am deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time. No, for this is the reason I have come to this time. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said, It's thunder. And others said, An angel spoke to him. Jesus replied, This voice wasn't for my benefit, but for yours. Now is the time for judgment of the world. Now this, ruler's, now this world's ruler will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. He said this to show how he was going to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in the litany. God knows us inside and out. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your steadfast love. We can't run and we can't hide. God is with us at all times. Have mercy upon us, O God. Don't be afraid. God will heal your wounds and bind up your broken hearts. Have mercy upon us, O God. From the very beginning, God has known and loved us. Open our hearts to receive your love, O God. Through all our stumbling and bumbling, God has lifted and carried us. Open our hearts to receive your love. Rest easy in the Lord, for God's healing presence is here. Restore us and give us peace, O God. Place your hand in Christ's hand. He will lead and guide your life. Bring us into your presence again, O God. Be at peace. God's love is with you. Thanks be to God for God's mercy, love, and grace. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The key word for, our, for today is service. And that's really a beautiful sign that Elena made that says service. And the symbol for this week is wheat, uh, since the gospel lesson today mentions the word uh, wheat. Um, so we're still on our 
our journey to the cross, and these are some of the barriers to the cross. And it's, it just looks so lovely. I like to look at it. But now you'll have to bear with me. I don't care if it rains or freezes, as long as I got my plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. Through my trials and tribulations and my travels through the nation, with my plastic Jesus, I'll go far. <laughs> that was something we just thought, when we sang when we were kids and we thought that was the most, um, I don't know, it was just, we just enjoyed doing it because we thought we should, weren't supposed to. But there was really a time when a, magne a magnetic Jesus or a crucifix for those in the Roman Catholic tradition was a common item in religious bookstores. The little statue of the Savior with his arms extended in blessing was meant to be placed on the dashboard of a car. Its purpose was reassurance, a reminder of the Lord's caring presence during morning and evening commutes. It's hard to even find a magnetic, a magnetic Jesus nowadays, mainly because dashboards are now made of fiberglass or plastic. It's purpose, but old timers know that that used to be a thing, and I'm one of those old timers. Now, the real Jesus is magnetic in a different sense. Just by being himself, he draws people towards him. Jesus Christ is more than a mere charismatic celebrity. What he offers the human race is far more dazzling than mere star power. The story of his life, death, and resurrection speaks to our deepest spiritual hungers. The promise of his continued presence as Holy Spirit assures us that we are never alone. Jesus is magnetic in a way very similar to those old-fashioned bar magnets that our grade school science teachers used to explain the physics of magnetism. Remember how it would fly together to meet each other? <clears throat> and do you remember how if you spun one end of the magnet around, you could bring the two of them together, but you couldn't make them stay there. As soon as you let go, one or more of the, one or both of the magnets would go spinning off in the opposite direction, unable to resist the powerful force of magnetic repulsion. There was something attractive about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as described a few verses earlier in this very same chapter of John's Gospel. That spiritual attraction causes the crowd to cheer, but there's also something repellent about Jesus to those who are as, as yet unwilling to welcome him into their hearts. Look, say the scribes and Pharisees in amazement, as they see the surging crowd. The world has gone after him. They speak those words, not in admiration, but in repulsion. Soon enough, through their schemes, they will turn the world against him, squeezing his lifeblood out upon the stones of Calvary. But Jesus is magnetic still. The crowds who will, strong, who will throng here for Palm Sunday may be drawn by the festive scene of children waving palm branches and cheered by rousing hymns, but that's only the half of it. It's the attractive half. This man who lurches awkwardly into Jerusalem on a donkey also has a repellent way about him. If you lay our ordinary, acquisitive life up against his, if you seek to align your life with his teachings, 
You may sometimes discover that your own life is spinning around until you're facing the opposite way. It's that power he has, God's power, the power of righteousness plunged into this world of sin like a hot poker into a vat of water. It's no wonder that the principalities and the powers crucified him. Once they discovered who he truly is and what his presence in this world really means, they realigned the repellent poles of their magnets against his brute force. When I am lifted up from earth, I will draw all people to myself, is what Jesus says in John. That's spiritual magnetism at work. On the one hand, he repels, but he also attracts. Once the power of his love gets hold of you, there's no resisting. He just brings you along. At his birth, he attracted shepherds to a Bethlehem hillside and wise men from afar. In the temple, when he was 12 years old, the wise and the learned gathered round to hear his teaching. He called to his side fishermen who left their nets and tax collectors who abandoned their account books. Even the wise Pharisee, Nicodemus, came to him by night to learn how to be born from above. He called to his side women of every description, everyone from the practical, no-nonsense Martha to her dreamy sister Mary. Even the Roman governor Pilate felt the pull of his magnetism as he interrogated him. A pity it was that the skeptical Pilate did not give in then and there and cease his resistance. Jesus can do the same for you and me today. Have you felt the pull of his love in your life, calling you out of ungodly habits? Have you experienced the fascination that comes from hearing his story, the timeless story, retold by the church in every age? Have you ever, ever turned to him in grief or worry or fear and discovered that at the center of your being, a calm and peaceful place where none of life's storms can harm you? If so, then you've felt his magnetism. Very likely, it's what has drawn you here to worship today. There's one other characteristic of those clunky bar magnets so beloved by science teachers. If you take a magnet that's powerful enough and you strap another piece of metal up against it for a sufficient period of time, that metal too becomes a magnet. Somehow the magnetic force leaps the gap and the other mental bar, metal bar becomes imbued with the magnet's power. Then it can too attract others. It can invite and guide others to the one source of attraction. If you've felt the pull of Jesus in your lives and if we've submitted ourselves to his power, we'll soon discover that our lives become magnetic too. Although, of course, in a more limited way. His magnetism will work through our own lives to invite others into a saving relationship with him. With Holy Week coming soon, maybe you've already begun to feel the attraction. Maybe you feel your soul yearning for that saving story of King Jesus riding on a donkey, then hung from a cross, then bursting forth from the tomb that could not hold him in. As we move toward the celebration of those world-changing events, know that the entry of the Son of God into human life is not only a matter of teaching, of blessing and healing, it's also a disturbance. 
His story reminds us that God still has plans for the world, big plans. Within those plans is our own particular place, the unique duties that God is calling us to perform. You and I can respond to that divine disturbance with hostility and rejection, or we can welcome the Lord as liberator and life giver. Either way, it's up to us to answer the call. So walk with the Lord in these final days of Lent. Walk with him, not only as he enters the city in bright sunshine, but also as he wades into the shadows. Go with him to dark Gethsemane and beyond. Watch with him and wonder at his spectacle of God's own son, arrested, condemned, crucified, and risen from the, from the grave. Amen. Send us forth, Lord, on this journey, and call us to faithful discipleship. Call us forth to repentance and new life. Call us to listen and to hear your word. Call us to serve and respond in your way. Call us to live always with hope and love. Amen.